rise is on that tree. Arise for you, arise for me. Come in now, Gerda and Kay. It's nearly time for Kay to go home to bed. And if you don't come in quickly, the wicked troll will be after you. The wicked troll! Before he catches us, quick! And this is where our story begins. Our story of long ago. It begins with the wicked troll. The trolls lived under the rickety bridges and behind the waterfalls and deep in the holes in the mountains, way, way up in the far north of the world. They had a lot of power, magic power. They could do anything they chose to do with it, and they chose to make mischief. But the wickedest troll of all was the one who thought up the trick with the magic mirror. <laughs> He'd made a mirror out of ice from the heart of the deepest glacier. It was a beautiful mirror. He gazed at himself in all his arguments. Oh, me, me, me. And when he breathed on it, when he breathed his foul, yellow, stinking breath on it and looked again, he found it distorted everything. <laughs> Lovely, handsome, beautiful. <laughs> Look at here. Look in my mirror. Is that me? <laughs> Why, I'm as beautiful as a... No, as you're a... not. Oh. It's my mirror that makes you look beautiful. It works the wrong way around. It's the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> so. The most beautiful things in the world look ugly. <laughs> ugly muggly. <laughs> Crinkled and tarnished <laughs> and crackled and grizzled. Oh. <laughs> Roses look like boiled spinach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't we try it on Earth? Oh. The most beautiful person in the world. Oh, the Snow Queen. Yes. The Snow Queen. The Snow Queen. Oh. See what it does to her. Silver hair like moonlight on ice. Blue eyes shimmering like crystals. Skin like fresh snow falls. Who could be more perfect, more eternal? Dear Queen, dear yourself, see your ugly heart! <laughs> oh, how dare you show me this? How dare you? She seized the mirror and flung it as far <gasps> away from her as she could. The mirror! And it broke into a million pieces, which floated into the air like the fragments of stars, like the dust of diamonds. Oh, the mischief now! <laughs> the wonderful mischief now! <laughs> the troll knew then that wherever any of those specks landed, they would cause ugliness. If they landed in anyone's eye, it would turn their heart to ice. And that is exactly what happened. The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen, dramatized by Burley Doherty, with Diana Rigg as the Snow Queen and Dirk Bogart as the narrator. Listen then to the story of Gerda and Kay, who were the best friends in the world and who nearly lost each other forever. Kay! Kay! Will you play, Gerda? Of course I will! And where could they play? They lived high, high above the city streets in the very top rooms of the very tallest houses. Their gardens were little bigger than window boxes on their window sills. In the summer, they could turn their window boxes round and make a bridge between their houses, and there they would sit together on two small stools and count the roses on their tree. We count the roses on that tree, a rose for you, a rose for me. <laughs> but it wasn't like this in winter. There was no sitting outside then. 
In winter, the windows were frozen up inside and out. The children had to be content with warming pennies by the fire and pressing them against the window panes to make peep holes. I can see you. I can see you. Shall I come round and play? And Kay would have to go all the way down his stairs and all the way up Gerda's stairs till he reached the room that she shared with her grandmother, and they would listen to her stories of long ago. Oh, come on in, Kay. Is it snowing yet? Yes, it is. Look how fast it's coming down. That's the swarming of the white bees. The white bees, Grandma. They're snowflakes. Is there a queen bee as well? Oh yes, there's a queen bee as well. She's always here on winter nights, flying through the streets and peeping in at the windows. She's the one who makes them freeze up. She makes patterns on them, just like flowers. Could she get inside? Just let her try. I put her on the stove and watch her melt. <laughs> well, now, should Kay have said that? That night before he went to sleep, he peeped through the little spy hole he'd made in his bedroom window. He watched the snowflakes swarming like a flurry of white bees. One of them came to rest on the rose tree on his window sill. It grew, and it grew, and it grew. It took the shape of a woman dressed from head to feet in shimmering white. <gasps> How beautiful she is! Her eyes are like black stars. Is she the Snow Queen? Remember me, Kay. Remember me always. <gasps> no, I won't remember you. Go away. <laughs> Kay kept the picture of the Snow Queen in his heart, and it dazzled him to think about her. But as winter turned to spring, and then to summer, all the memory of that winter night faded away as if it had been a dream. I've just come back from the market with presents for you both. Do you oh. want to see what I've brought you? Yes, please. Gerda, these are for you. Oh, thank you, Grandma. Red shoes. Oh, they're beautiful. I've always wanted red shoes. Are they really for me? Well, they're certainly not for Kay, <laughs> but I have managed to buy him something. Oh, here you are, Kay. Boots, real boots. They're for winter, really, so they'll be a bit big yet. Try them on. Oh, they're perfect. You sound like a squeaky old mouse. <laughs> I put a bit of wax on them for you. No, I like them like this. <laughs> well, we'll so certainly hear you coming. What shall we play? We haven't counted the roses on our tree today. There might be more now. Some of them are dying already. The petals are falling. We can make patterns with them. Oh, 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 oh. are you all right? Something in my eye. Can you get it out? Keep still. Oh. Let me dab it. I can't see anything there. Has it gone now? I think so. But my heart. It hurts. It hurts. Grandma. Oh, quick! It hurts. Oh, she's not there. I don't know what to do. Oh, keep still, Ken. Let me hold you. It's gone. Are you sure? Yes, it's gone. What on earth are you crying for? I told you, it's gone. Oh, these flowers are horrible. Stop it! What are you doing? You break our tree. I don't want to play anymore. Oh, I'm going home. All these boots! They're too big! How do we expect to wear them? It worked! It worked! My wonderful magic mirror! Right to his heart, it's gone! <laughs> and it'll never come out again! Never! <laughs> How could Gerda possibly understand what had happened to her best friend? She thought she must have done something wrong and that he would forget about it the next day and come running across to play with her. But he didn't. The rose petals fell from the tree, and autumn came, and then winter. Snowflakes fluttered down, and the windows froze up. Gerda warmed a penny by the fire and pressed it against the glass to make a peephole. She looked across to Kay's house, and you can imagine how pleased she was when she saw that he had made a peephole too, just like he used to do. Kay, I can see you. Will you play? 
play? Play? No, of course I don't want to play. I'm studying the snowflakes. Oh, come round, Kay. I'd like to tell you both a story. Not me. I've been told I can go sledging in the square with the big boys. I'm off. Chris, dazzling me is so bright. I can hardly look at it. That's a real cool cup. Yeah. Do you see who's in it? They're all wrapped up, whoever it is. You get a brilliant bright if you tied your sledge to that. Go on then. Yeah. A day or two. Not me. Look at the speed it's doing. You yeah. do it. Not oh, no chance. I will. I can catch up with this easily. <laughs> yeah. Just watch. Oh, squeaky on. Boots is going to do it. Go on, little Squeaky <laughs> Boots. Catch it. He hasn't got a chance. <laughs> Look at him. He's well, actually stopping for him. How about that? Only just. It's off again. What a dazzler. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, the Squeaky Boots. Yes. I don't want to lose you. Who are you? I think you know me. I wish you'd stop. Can't you slow down? Say your prayers, little kid. Our father, Martin, seven times three is twenty-one. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Who art? Who art? Seven times five is thirty-five. Imagine a great white bird skimming across the snow, its wings furled back, spindrift whirling round it. Imagine Kay on his old sledge, bumping along behind it, clinging with all his strength to the tattered rope that tilted. Help! Help me! Ah! You did well, little Kay. You held on well. Broken my sledge. Look at it. I'll never be able to get back now. Climb up next to me. There you are. That's better, isn't it? Up in my big sleigh. This is where you really wanted to be. Up here with me. But who are you? Don't you know me? You. You're the Snow Queen. Sit close to me. Right here. Are you tired? We've made good headway, but there's a long way to go yet. Where are you taking me? I want to go home now. You won't be going home again. You won't want to. Now you're with me. Oh, how you're shivering. Wrap yourself in my fur cloak. There. Snuggle right up to me. Isn't that better? And now, let me just kiss you. <gasps> the Snow Queen's kiss went straight to Kay's heart and froze it as if it had been gripped in ice. He thought he was going to die. There, you're mine now. Mine. For all eternity. From that moment, he forgot about little Gerda and about the grandmother who told him stories of long ago. All he could think about was the Snow Queen. He was entranced by her. I think... What do you think, child? I think you're very beautiful. <laughs> And with that, the Snow Queen laughed and urged on her reindeer to fly like wild geese, swift and steady and sure as arrows, to the frozen north. Night came, and the sky drained to deepest black all around them, and still she urged them on. White day dawned, and drew on to night, and still they flew. Did you sleep, Kay? Not really. I can't stop myself thinking. What were you saying when you were on your sled? You weren't saying your prayers, were you? I was saying my multiplication tables. Are you good at arithmetic? Yes. 
I can even do fractions in my head. Can you? And I know the areas and population of Denmark, and Norway, and Sweden, and Finland. And do you know everything there is to know then, little boy? Yes. I think I do. Look at the sky. Look at all the millions of frosty stars. Look at the milky moon. Look down at the forests and lakes and mountains, how deep they are and dark. Can you see into their hearts, their mystery? Do you really know everything, Kay? No. No, I don't. That's all right. You can sleep now. Sleep. And on they flew, through day and through night, further and higher and deeper into the land of darkness than Kay had ever dreamed about. A long, long way from home. Mountains reared white heads, and rivers ran pale as apple mint. Crystals hung from the forests, and then the day turned dark. Everything that breathed was locked in ice. Now, Kay, we are here. We have come home to the Ice Palace. And what about Gerda? Day after day, she thawed the ice on her window and watched out for Kay. She couldn't understand why he didn't come home. Summer came and the roses bloomed and faded. She never gave up hope, watching and waiting for him. Come inside, child. I'll tell you a story, shall I? Will that cheer you up? All right. I'll come. I could tell you about the bears and the ravens and the fishes that I've talked to from time to time. I wish I could talk to them. Perhaps you can, if you try. Grandma... If you wanted to know where somebody was, who would you ask first? I'd ask the fishes in the river. They swim from the mountains and through the valleys and down and down to the sea. Oh, fishes must know everything there is to know, I would think. Would they tell me where Kay is? Can I ask them? You have to be good, child. With all your heart, you have to be good. I will ask them. There was Grandmother, fast asleep in her faded chair by the stove. Gerda kissed her goodbye and put on her red shoes and her cloak and put bread and cakes in her basket. She tiptoed out of the house and down all the stairs and through the streets of the town until she came to the river. Fishes? Can you hear me? Where's Kay? Fish of the river. I'll give you anything. Look, I'll give you my lovely red shoes. If the river will give Kay back to me. There. Now will you tell me where he is? (laughs) Nothing. Nothing at all. How tired and sore her feet were as Gerda walked along the banks of the river, calling out for Kay. She walked far away from her home. The days grew cold and raw. The long willow leaves were yellow and dripping, wet in the mist. Leaf falling after leaf, and after the leaves came the snow in huge, white, silent flakes. So cold. Cold? Is this what you call cold? Who is that? Me! Ah! Ah! Crow! Have you never seen a crow before? Of course I've seen crows before. But I've never understood what they were saying. Why not? Ah! I can understand you perfectly well. Why shouldn't you understand me? My grandmother can speak to animals. She can understand all the languages. I didn't know I could. Well, there you are. Life is full of little surprises, as my sweetheart always says. Where are you off to? All by yourself in the wide world with no shoes on your feet. 
I'm looking for my best friend, Kay. He disappeared one day last year, when the snow was just like this, and he's never been seen since. Have you seen him? I may have done. Crow, have you? Where? When? Is he all right? Where is he now? Go easy. Go easy. You're crushing all my feathers. If you want to know the truth, I haven't seen him. But I might have heard about him. I have a sweetheart. You see, she has the shiniest feathers and the blackest eyes and the most raucous, wonderful voice. She works at the palace. She'll know if anyone does. Come with me and we'll have a talk with my sweetheart. Now, come along. Don't dawdle. Come and come. Crow began to run through the birch woods, chattering away to Gerd as if he'd known her all his life. And she ran to keep up with him. He was so eager to help her, and so excited at seeing his sweetheart again, that every so often he would tuck up his feet and flap his wings and rise up over the treetops, and Gerd would have to call him down again. Crow! Come back! How far is it now? Not far as the crow flies. But I can't! That's very inconvenient. You really should learn. Does you good to stretch your wings now and again? Ah, oh, it takes the weight off your feet. But is it far? And just when Gerd was beginning to give up hope, there it was. Shimmering through the trees, a golden palace with crimson banners billowing from the turrets and torches of flame blazing above the door. There she is, waiting by the gate for me. Can you see her? My own black beauty. Sweetheart! 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 Well, I don't know, do I, whether it's your Kay I've seen. Gah, gah. There's been that many comings and goings since my mistress, the princess, started looking for a husband. A husband? He's only a little boy. Uh, he's only a lad, sweetheart. Is he now? Well, you've never seen so many hopefuls arriving, prince this and lord that, weighed down with presents and promises and ponzi palavas. Oh. And she didn't like any of them. On the third day of all this carry-on, up came a boy without a horse or coach, in ordinary clothes, and up he marched, cool as you please, to the very front door of the palace. That'd be him, the very one. Did his boots squeak? I'll say they did, but he wasn't a bit afraid. He was muttering away to himself, I do know that. His multiplication tables. It was Kay. It must have been. Ah, oh, there you are. I told you she could help you, my clever little sweetheart. Give us a bet. Oh, stop that. No. Not in front of the lady. I don't suppose you could take me to him, could you? Can you do that, sweetheart? Past the palace guards? Of course you can, my clever little darling. <laughs> we'll have to go in the back way, because they'll never let you in when they see your bare feet. Follow me. Gerda's heart was pittering with fear and longing as she followed the crow and his sweetheart round the back of the palace, away from the fiery torches and the glares of the guards. Come in. Come in quick. Now, we have to walk down this long corridor. It's very dark all the way, so lift down that lantern, Gerda, and whatever you do, don't make a sound. Not a sound. Tiptoe toddle. Quiet. You go, go. And at last they came to a huge door to a to a room that was full of a soft, rosy light and the gentle sighing of sleep. This is the royal chamber. Will you just look at the pair of them? They've obviously had enough interesting conversation. Oh, no, no. Oh, she's in that white silk hammock, bless her. And he's in the red one. Swing, swing, swing. There's your okay for you, I should say. It's his yellow hair, all right. It is him! Kay! Gerda rushed towards the scarlet hammock, too full of joy to be afraid, and her cry woke up the young prince. When the prince turned round, he was not Kay at all. Oh! Who's this? What do you want? It's not him! Oh, no! Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, it, it's not, is it? Oh, God. Poor God. thing. Come here, child. What do you want in my palace? I'm looking for my best friend, Kay. 
He went away one day and... He hasn't been seen since and everyone says he's dead. We thought, you see, so many young men, you see... Squeaky shoe, silly mister. No, your fault, Crow. Oh, God. Oh. But you know he isn't dead. I just want to find him. He isn't here, I'm afraid. God, God, God. It isn't the Crow's fault. They just brought me here because they were sorry for me. They thought you might be able to help me. What a good crow you are to bring this child to me for help. Yes. I love helping people. It's my hobby. Gah, gah. And you, child, must sleep here tonight. Thank you. I am very tired. That night, Gerda slept in a silver hammock, and dreams rocked her and sang to her and whispered pictures into her mind of long ago when everything had been all right. When she woke up, she had a breakfast of bilberries and potato cakes, and then she was dressed in fine, warm clothes and taken out to the coach that had been prepared for her. Goodbye, little Gerda. Goodbye, and good luck in your search. Goodbye. Thank you for everything, Crow. You've been such a kind friend to me. Oh, God, there, there. Don't set me off, whatever you do. God, God. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. 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 Now I'm all alone again. Grandmama says you should eat ginger nuts to stop you feeling travel sick. Oh, there's some under my seat. But I'd better save some for Kay. I'm sure it won't be long now before I find him. But Kay is far, far away, a prisoner in the vast frozen palace of the Snow Queen. He never thinks about Gerda now. She belongs to the part of him that is ice. His heart. <laughs> Leave? You don't want to leave me, Kay. You have plenty to do, playing with your blocks of ice. I've made you some fine patterns. Look. Fine patterns they are, but not fine enough. If you want to leave here, Kay, make me the finest pattern of all. But every one I make is more perfect than the one before. You don't even look at them. I can see them, but they are not what I'm asking for. How can they be perfect when they don't tell me what I want to see? What do you want to see? What more can I give you? The perfection of logic. I don't understand. Don't you? <laughs> then how can you ask for your freedom? The pattern I want, Kay, is the pattern of eternity. Find me that, and you shall have the freedom of the world. <laughs> What I see, Mum. What do you see beyond your big red nose? Oh, through the trees. A, <gasps> a silvery horse. Oh, I do see it too. A shining coach. I told you. <laughs> Stand back, will you? Oh, oh, Robert, girl. Stand back for a. Oh. Get down. 
Oh, 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 daughter! I want to see. Bend yeah. over, Mark. Oh. Let me climb on your back. Yeah. Now, stand up. Oh, oh, Come on, st st steady now. Steady, oh. steady. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. What are you looking at? Gold. Gold. Pure, shining, lovely gold. Well, snip, snip, snee. It must belong to the king himself, Mark. <laughs> Chop his head off. Shall we, Mum? Yes. Yeah. Go on, Mum. Go on, Mum. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Take it. Kill the coachman. Kill the king. And bring the guard to me, yeah. your robber queen. <laughs> Princess! Ah, there's no one else! Stop! Stop him, Ma! I want the horse! Hey. I want the coat! I want the princess! Let's have a look at her! No, she's fat! She's delicious! She's been fed on ginger nuts and ham! She's as good as a fat! Little lamb. Little lamb. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh. 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 I can already smell her cooking. Oh, yeah. Oh. I wanna. Oh, come on, Mark. No. I'll fight you for it. Oh, get off me. <laughs> Stop <laughs> biting me here, you monkey. Ow. Wait, Let wait, me wait, out wait, of there. Oh, Stop biting. I want a muff. I want a boot. Oh. I want to ride in the golden coach. Oh, get on with you. Yeah. I've had enough. Oh. Get on, here. Once round the forest, daughter, and then bed, mind the other. What are you lot staring at? Anyone else? Want a scrap? Yes, please. <laughs> I'll drive first, then you can have a go. Would your mother really have killed me? Snip, snip, snee. Didn't you see a dagger shimmer, shimmer, shine? Didn't you see a wagon of beard at you? Sparking her greedy little eyes. Well... Thank you for saving me. Did I say I'd saved you? I said it because I want to play with you. We might still eat you if I decide I don't like you. <laughs> Poor little tasty princess. I'm not a princess. I'm Gerda. And I'm looking for my best friend, Kay. He went out to play in the snow one day. And he didn't come back. Everyone says he's dead. But I know he isn't. I want to find him. Well, snip, snip. They shan't slaughter you, even if I stop liking you. Though I might do it myself. Whoa! Let's just see how we get on. You'll do what I tell you, mind. You'll sleep in our hall tonight with me and all me pets. Come on! Oh. A great, dark, shambling ruin of a place it was. Made of logs with wild grass growing on the roof. And the yellow light of candles glimmering through the slits. This was the robber hall. Gerda was pulled through the door, and there was such a reek of sweat, of beer, of smoke, of candle fat, of animals and their droppings, that she nearly wrenched. Uh, what's up with you? Don't you like me beautiful home? Robbers lay curled up by the fire so close to it that you'd think their grisly beards were set alight. Some lay head down on the long tables, snoring into their spilt ale cups. Others swayed or reeled to the music of the fiddle. Shut up! That's better. You dogs aren't allowed to bark. Don't look so worried. They won't bite you unless we tell them to. Are they your pets? Not likely. I'll show you my pets. Come up to my chamber. These pigeons. Here, I'll give it a kiss. Go on. You won't bite your nose off. No. <laughs> Good rascals they are. Fly off if you don't keep them locked up properly. Poor things. And they're so pretty. All those lovely colours. It seems a shame to keep them locked up and no one can see them. I can see them. You do have some funny ideas. And here's my old sweetheart, Barbar. Mwah. Kiss him too. What's up? Don't you like him? I don't think I've really ever seen a reindeer before. 
Go on, give him a smacker. He's another one I have to lock up, or he'd be off, wouldn't you, Barbo? Stupid thing can't talk. Every night I like to tickle his neck with me lovely, long, sharp knife. <laughs> that scares him. Right! Let's have my music. Oh, she goes! One! That's me fat mama down there, doing somersaults along the table. She does it every night, keeps me awake. Just look at her. She's very good at it. I'd fall off if I tried. Mama doesn't need to try, she just rolls. I want to go to sleep now, right now. In you get, my little friend Gerda. Next to me, come on. Tell me a story to send me to sleep. Tell me about your friend Kay. I can hardly remember him anymore. He had squeaky boots that my grandmother bought him when she bought my lovely red shoes. And he loves numbers and patterns and counting the roses on our tree. Oh, sounds a bit boring to me. But that was such a long time ago. I don't think I'll ever find him now. Who's in the cave? What? Who said that? I did. I too. We've seen Kay. Have you really? But where did you see him? It was before we were captured. We saw him riding in the Snow Queen's sledge. The Snow Queen? So she's the one who's taken him. Where did she go? Lapland. Lapland. That's where she'd go where there's always ice. Ask the reindeer. He'll know. Lapland. That's the place for ice and snow. All right. Oh, it's wonderful there. I used to wander about there to my heart's content in my youth, instead of being tied up here and tickled with knives. How far away is Lapland? Hey, Jack Lorem, snip, snap, snorem. Shut up and go to sleep. But the pigeons have seen Kay. Oh, they tell you anything just to impress you. Besides, they can't even talk. They can. They said he's with the Snow Queen and Barbar says she lives in Lapland. Oh, he's been talking to her as well, has he? That old goat. Oh, stop mooing and talk properly if you really can. Do you know where Lapland is? Who else should know if I don't? So you can talk. You really can. I always suspected it, you know, Gerda. But I never could get any sense out of them. Well, what do you know? Go on then, Barbar. -bar. There have I roamed. A young wild stag free as the wind. All right, all right, that'll do. Hey, wait till Mari is this. She'll be impressed with you, Gerda. Robber girl, you've been very kind to me, and you saved my life, and let me share your bed and everything. I'll always remember how kind you were, but you must let me go now. I must find Kay. Why should I let you go? I was just starting to like you. Then you'll understand how much I'm missing my friend. I want him back. All right. If he means that much to you, I suppose I'll have to let you go. But you'll never get to Lapland on your own. Hey, listen, Barbar. -Bar. I'd love to keep you here and tickle you with this knife of mine. And I'd love to keep Gerda here to play with, because she's so strange. But I won't. I'm going to let you both go. If you'll take Gerda to Lapland and show her where the Snow Queen lives. Lapland. Home of my childhood. Home of my oh, youth. Thank you. Oh, be quiet, both of you. Or you'll wake me ugly mother and you'll both be in the stew pot. Come on, let's see what's going on down there. They're all asleep. The old stinking lot of them. What's going on, don't they? Nothing, Ma. My friend and I want some supper, that's all. She's asleep again. Yeah. You take her furry gloves, pull them off her. I can't do that. Well, I'm keeping your muff, so you'll have to. Here you are. She didn't feel a thing. Are you ready, Barbar? -Bar? You said goodbye to your friends. I'm ready for my mission. Come on then, sloppy chops. Give us a kiss. Mm. I'm gonna miss you. Up you get, Gerda. Climb on now. And don't fall off. You take care of her, Barbar. -Bar. Off you go now. And off galloped the reindeer with Gerda clinging to his back. They journeyed through the forest that were dark with the scent of pine trees and where the white branches of the birch trees twisted like antlers. They climbed among the tinkling of cowbells, up and up the white-headed mountains. On and on they rode, the days grew darker. Ooh.
wolves howled and ravens croaked, and above them the northern lights blazed and sneezed in a streaming arch of flickering colors. See how the sky flashes, Gerda. Isn't that wonderful? We're here. We are in Lapland. Where do we go now, though? You're all in. Maybe we should stop at this cottage and ask the way, and warm you up a bit. I'm too tired to talk to anyone. My hands are too cold to knock on the door. I shouldn't think anything bigger than a rabbit could get through that little door. I'll try anyway. Hello? Hello? Who's that bashing on my door as if they were trying to break it down? Why, it's you, is it, a reindeer? No wonder you made such a racket with those horny antlers of yours. What is it you want? I'm knocking for my young friend, who's so frozen with cold that she can't move or speak. I found my way here all by myself because I used to live here in my youth, you know. That's all very well, but what about this poor child? What does she want in Lapland? Looking for my friend, Kay. Who was taken away by the Snow Queen. That's not good. No, it's not, is it? But she hopes to find him all the same. Oh, bring her in. You'll have to crawl in on your bellies, both of you, and shut the door behind you. Oh, look at the sight of you, girl, shivering like a leaf. Is that all you have to wear? You'll soon warm up in here. I was just frying some fish. You have some, you poor child. You've a long way to go yet. But I thought the Snow Queen lived in Lapland. Not this time of year, she doesn't. Finnmark, that's where you'll find the Snow Queen, hundreds of miles away. Are you sure you want to do it? I want to find Kay. There, there, I can do without tears. I'll write a few words on a piece of dried cod and you can take it to the Finn woman up there. She'll tell you where to go if anyone can. And once again, Gerda and Baba set off into the endless night with the old woman of Lapland's piece of dried fish strapped to the reindeer's back. Nothing moved around them. No streams, no birds. Everything was silent. And everything was still. We've been miles and miles and miles. And everywhere is the same. Ice, ice, nothing but ice and snow. How can anyone live here? Here's a house. I think this is the one we're meant to stop at. There isn't even a door. There's only a chimney sticking up out of the ice. I don't think it's a house at all. I'll try knocking on the chimney all the same. I can hear you out there. Come right in. That's right, feet first. Easy does it. A dark little hole of a place hung with furs and stinking fish. Too hot to breathe in. There in the corner, in front of her fire, crouched the old woman of Finnmark, more shrunken and shriveled than it was possible to be. She's hardly got any clothes on. Well, neither should you have if you've got any sense, child. Do they don't hear me gloves off, girl, and your cloak at least. Well, warm your toes up, that's it. Oh, get me out of here. It's too hot for me. I think I'm going to faint. Oh, look, let me put some ice on your forehead. Mm. There, now, isn't that better? You can swelter in here or freeze out there. I don't mind. It's your choice. But let me give you a bite to eat before you go. Oh, I said you've got girl. Dried fish? Oh, just right. Pop it in the pot. No. No, it's got a message on it. It's about my friend Kay. Please read it. Oh, it's from the Dane, is it? Oh, it's good fish. Oh, that... Don't worry, I'll read it first. Hmm. Mm. Snow Queen. Oh, dear. Well, I'm, I'm certainly not going to waste it. Baba, please ask her what I can do. Old Lady of Finnmark. You're so wise. Mm, what, what now? Surely you can do something for little Gerda here. Oh, what should I do for her, if I could? Make her as strong as twelve men, so she can overcome the Snow Queen. <laughs> as strong as twelve men? <laughs> that would be a fine thing. But you can do it. Oh, could I now? If you must know, 
Her little friend, Kay, is with the Snow Queen, sure enough, but he's quite happy, you see. He thinks her ice palace is the best place in the world. That's because he has splinters of glass in his eye, and in his heart will have to come out, or he'll never be human again. Snow Queen will have him in her power for the rest of his days. But can't you give Gerda something to take so that she'll have power over things like that? I can't give her any greater power than she has already. What do you mean by that? Look at her. Can't you see how great she is? Human beings and animals are forced to serve her, don't you see that? Well, see how well she's managed in the world, in her bare feet. Child that she is, and all alone. I can't give her any power. It's in her heart. If you could just tell me where the Snow Queen is, I'm sure I could manage. Snow Queen's garden begins ten miles from here. Take good, huh? as far as the big bush with red berries, and no further. Hmm? And don't stand about gossiping. It's a strange woman, Snow Queen is. That's for sure. Here's the bush, Baba. You have to set me down here. I know what she said, but how can I leave you here all on your own? You've no boots. You've lost your gloves. It's not right for me to leave you like this. I can't do it. You have to. This is where I want to be. I'm at the end of my journey now. Of course I'll be all right. Goodbye. Bye. How the snow drove down on her. And now she could see, rising before her, the Snow Queen's palace. The walls of the palace were drifting snow. The windows and doors, the cutting winds which howled and sang like whips lashing along empty corridors. There were hundreds of halls, each one more vast and bare and dazzling blue than the last. No laughter, no voices at all, nothing. Kay! Can you hear me? Poor Kay. Can he really live here? There's nothing. Nothing but ice. How can he play? In the center of the ice palace was a huge frozen lake as blue as the heart of a glacier. It had cracked into a thousand pieces. Here the Snow Queen sat on a throne, dripping with icicles, and here Kay worked. He was nearly black with cold and spent his days heaving blocks of ice, this way and that, that way and this, hour after hour. Still busy, my Kay? Come and see the new pattern I've made. Are you satisfied with that? It's a perfect pattern. It's interesting and clever. The geometry is good. But it's not the pattern I want. I don't know what you mean. What more do you want? Eternity! Have you forgotten? <laughs> you may be good at numbers, Kay, but that is never enough. When you can make for me the pattern of eternity, you shall be your own master. Would I be free to go? Of course you would. But where would you go? Tell me that. I don't know. I don't even know where I am. And this is the boy who knows everything. <laughs> you know nothing. Now I'm going south to touch the heads of the volcanoes with snow. Find the pattern of eternity for me before I return. Or you're mine forever. Gods! And there he sat shifting the blocks one way and another in his mind, gazing at them, thinking until you could hear his brains crack. He sat so still that you'd have thought he'd frozen to death. And that was how Gerda found him. Kay! Kay! You are here! I found you at last! Kay! What is it? 
Can't you move? Can't you speak to me? Or look at me? You're so stiff and still and cold. I can't tell if you're breathing. Please speak to me. You must remember me. I've come all this way to find you. They all thought you were dead, but I knew you weren't. I gave away my red shoes so I could find you. Don't you remember me, Kay? Don't you remember me at all? We count the roses on our tree. A rose for you, a rose for me. Remember, Kay! Remember! We count the roses on our tree. A rose for you. <laughs> a rose for you. A rose for me. <laughs> and as Gerda and Kay wept, their warm tears melted the ice from his heart, and the glass fell from his eye. And he knew Gerda again. Gerda! It's you! It's really you! Kay! Where have you been? Where have I been? I've been looking for you! I came all this way! You won't believe how far it is. But the crow helped me, and the princess, and the robber girl. I'm so cold. Let me warm you. Let me kiss your cheeks. To make them glow again. And your eyes. To make them shine. Dance with me, Kay. Can you stand up? Dance with me. <laughs> Up. The ice is moving. It's dancing with us. <laughs> the books are making shapes. All on their own. They're spelling out letters. That's an E. There's T. E T. E R. Eternity. Eternity. That's the pattern she wanted. I'm free! Kurta! I'm free to go home! <laughs> Gerda and Kay held hands and ran and ran down the corridors and out through the main door. They turned to look back for one last time at the ice palace, rising like blue coral out of the sea of snow. The Snow Queen swirled down in her sleigh, passing over their heads, as if she couldn't see them at all, as if they were too small for her to notice. They were nothing to her. It was as if Kay's relentless toiling and Gerda's long search for him had been just a moment of play for her. In all the crevices of the earth, the wicked trolls laughed in ecstasy to see how well their trick had worked. We're nearly out of the palace grounds, Kay. Here's the tree with the red berries where Baba left me. And he's Baba. So you found your friend, Gerda? I can understand you. Have you been waiting here for me all the time? On and off. You've been away for a long time. I brought my wife to meet you. Hello, Gerda. Hello, King. Hello. Hello. I've heard so much about you. I have milk for you both to help you on your way. And then we'll carry you both to the old woman of Finnmark's house. <laughs> Gerda and Kay clung on to the reindeer's backs. They really were on their way home. They were warm and well-fed, and happy as they sped over the mountains that were shimmering in sunshine. The icicles were melting. Set us down here, Barbara. <clears throat> this is where the thaw is starting. I don't want to leave you. But this is your home, Lapland. You're here at last, and you have a wife to share it with. You'll be happy now, dear Baba. I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Gerda. Goodbye, Kay. Bye. Look after my little Gerda for me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Gerda and Kay Bye. turned away, sadly. And at last, 
They came out of the lands of snow. The long, long journey was coming to an end. In the fields and roadsides, spring flowers were opening out. Kay and Gerda walked hand in hand towards the tires and spires of a big town. We're here! This is our town! And our street, Kay! Your house! And yours! Your long, steep stairs! My door! Grandma? Is that Gerda? Is that Kay? Is it really you come home again? Everything stood where it had stood before. The window was open, and there were the window boxes, full of flowers and the rose tree coming into bud. The little stools. Kay and Gerda ran to their stools and sat on them and realized for the first time. Kay, they're too small for us. Where did our childhood go to? We spent it looking for each other. <laughs> the cold splendor of the Snow Queen and her palace were like dreams, fading, melting away to nothing. <laughs> there they sat. <laughs> Kay and Gerda, grown up and yet child. Children at heart. And it was summer. Warm and blessed summer. The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen was narrated by Dirk Bogard with Diana Rigg as the Snow Queen. Gerda and Kay were played by Samantha Glenn and James Cohen and Grandmama by Margaret John. The Robber Queen was Peter Woodthorpe, Baba -Ba the Reindeer, Bill Patterson and the Robber Girl, Emma Ray. Paul Copley played Crow, and Natasha Pine, Crow's sweetheart. Other parts were played by Kristen Millwood, Annabel Mullion, Deborah Berlin, George Parsons, Gavin Muir, Don McCorkindale, Oliver Senton, and Joshua Taub. The music was by David Chilton and Nick Russell Pavia. The Snow Queen was dramatised by Burley Doherty and directed by Janet Whittaker. <laughs>